Hello everyone and welcome to Monroe McLean Gymnasium here at Quincy High School where tonight in the first round of the MIAA Division I playoffs the Quincy Presidents will host the Hillers of Hopkinton High School. My name is Jonathan Kaleri. I'm being joined by Jim Timmons and Jim uh, we've been waiting for this day. Quincy Presidents they knew they were going to be in the tournament for quite some time. They rolled through the regular season. They repeated as Fisher League Division Champions in the Patriot League and now they're ready for the first round here in the playoffs. Yeah they're really playing first class basketball John. A lot of balance and we saw how they developed over the course of the season when we covered them uh, the last time here in the gym and the game against North Quincy. The first game at North was quite close. Second game was not. And that was in large part due to the development of this Quincy High squad over the course of the season. So uh, why don't you take a couple of minutes to preview the Quincy High team and then I'll talk about the uh, Hilltoppers from Hopkinton, John. Yeah, certainly well. Quincy with a record of 17-3 and this year, 14-2 in the Patriot League, and as I said, they won the Fisher Division for the second year in a row, tied with Whitman Hansen on the overall league, uh, with each with 14-2 and records. Quincy comes into this game with the number nine seed in the tournament. Uh, they're led by one of their star players, Alyssa Hops, second in the league with 16 points per game scoring, and the overall one of the best players in the Patriot League. Uh, so again, the president 17 and three um, finished the season pretty strong, winning the last seven games in a row. Excuse me, eight games in a row, uh, including as Jim was talking about, a game here at North uh, at Quincy High School versus North Quincy, uh, winning that game 71 to 45. Also beating Silver Lake and at Marshfield to wrap up the season. Quincy looking to have a deep run here in the tournament again as the number eight seed, hoping uh, they can win this game and then they'll go on to face Lexington High School sometime next week, either Monday or Tuesday, we believe, uh, if they win that game and to go on. Uh, so hoping they can uh, defeat Hopkinton High School here, Jim, uh, one of the uh, Tri-Valley League teams. Yes, yeah, they're the toppers. I call them the Hilltoppers. We're not up in Somerville, but um, <laughs> Hopkinton is uh, out of the Tri-Valley League, as you said, the large school division, and that is first-class basketball. It always has been. Um, there's some great girls programs in, Hop in the uh, Tri-Valley League. And um, so this Hopkinton squad on the road tonight is going to present a challenge. Uh, John, there's nine players playing for Hopkinton, and Coach Mike Greco talked about them the beginning of the season. Uh, he mentioned they all have experience, and they're all about the same size. They're interchangeable, somewhat like the way we talk about the Celtics. Um, so it's going to be an interesting game. We'll talk about some of the girls here from Hopkinton as the game go, moves along and from Quincy High, you'll get a little more of the first names and whatnot, but um, we're gonna stop for the game preliminaries and we wanna welcome viewers from Hopkinton. We know that the live coverage here from QATV is uh, being picked up by YouTube and Hopkinton viewers were invited to uh, by the school to uh, pay attention to view if they wished. So we're going to have to keep it clean, John, and not call a homer game, all right? <laughs> yeah, I should uh, thank the uh, Hopkinton Athletic Director, Ricky Andre, for uh, providing some information and uh, rosters for us as well. And uh, also a big thanks, as always, to the Quincy High School Athletic Director, or Quincy Public Schools Athletic Director, excuse me, Kevin Mahoney, uh, for always helping us out and being a gracious host here at the high school. Yeah, Kevin does a terrific job. He really does. All right, so as Jim said, they're getting ready to uh, introduce the starting lineup. So we'll go down to the PA announcer for the lineups. And now for the starting lineups, starting with the Hillers of Hopkinton High School. This young lady is in guard. She's a sophomore, number 22, Tegan Restabini. This young lady is a junior and forward, number 15, Holly Maharic. This young lady is a forward. She's a senior. She's a trying captain, number 20, Kate Finnegan. This young lady is a senior at guard. She's a tight captain, number 10, Bethel Flanagan. This young lady is a senior at guard. She's also a tight captain, number 4, Elena Davies, head coach and director of assistants, Perry Chen and Gucci. And now, for your Quincy presidents. This young lady is a freshman at guard, number 15, Frankie Diaz. This young lady is a freshman at guard, number 21, Rory Kennedy. This young lady is a junior forward, she's a tri-captain, number 30, Lee 
High school students, a cappella. What a lovely job they just did with our national anthem. All right, real quick, we'll run down these starting lineups. First, for the Quincy Presidents, number 15, freshman Frankie Diaz. Number 21, freshman Rory Kennedy. Number 30, junior Neve Gendron. Number 31, senior Paige Mann. And number 32, junior Alyssa Hops. For the Hillers, number four, senior Elena Davies. Number 10, senior Bethel Flanagan. Number 15, junior Holly Paharic. Number 20, senior Kate Finnegan. And number 22, sophomore Tegan Restagini. John, I, we talk about this whenever the, we, we are in the Quincy High gym. This is a tough gym for a visiting team to adjust to. Uh, it's a really big gym. It's got a high ceiling. It's almost like being in a cube. The walls that are behind the hoops are about 25 feet away on both ends. So the baskets themselves appear to be kind of sitting in the middle of, you know, the, uh, 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 an auditorium almost. So for outside shooters, that presents a little bit of an issue in terms of acclimating. Um, and you look for Quincy to try to take advantage of that early on as the home team. Um, whether the toppers are aware that they're playing with the friendliest backboards in the eastern United States, I'm not <laughs> sure, but uh, these are a, a soft plastic uh, backboard that is extremely forgiving. And the girls from Quincy High know that. The same set of backboards are down at North Quincy High, and uh, the North kids are well familiar with it. So um, that's going to be another factor here. Quincy High's inside play, as when they go inside, and the familiarity of the backboard is, uh, is going to be a little bit of an edge. So that's one little dynamic, along with the long bus ride, and the fact for both teams, this is their first shot in the state tournament here. Uh, you mentioned a couple of freshmen starting for Quincy High, and um, you know, it's been interesting how they've integrated. Coach Conlon has brought in a lot of young players. They had a predominantly senior group last year, and a lot of great senior leadership. Alyssa Hops was a huge factor last year, but now some of the freshmen are playing great. 
Yeah, they certainly are. Like you said, uh, Frankie Diaz and Rory Kennedy, uh, also with Evie Catrabone, who uh, three freshmen here for the Presidents, uh, with Diaz and Kennedy being the starters for most of the year here for the Presidents, and certainly big contributors here to go along with the, uh, the upperclassmen. And um, Quincy High School, only one senior uh, on the, or two seniors, excuse me, on their roster, uh, Paige Mann, who got his starting, and Nicole Costa. Uh, so basically everyone's coming back next year for the Presidents as well. So see if they can get some good tournament experience here to then make a deep run and then continue it on next year as well. All right, Presidents control the tip, and pass is going to go out of bounds off the Presidents, and it'll be Hiller's ball. Yeah, whether that was pregame jitters or not, I'm not sure, but those are the types of things that are going to happen early on in the game. Little errors. Uh, once the girls get going here and get in the flow, it'll be interesting to see how things uh, start to settle down. Davies with the ball, driving in, was trying to get it down low, could not get a pass, taken away there by Alyssa Hops. Also nice defense there by Paige Mann. Mann goes for the back cut, and Diaz was trying to find her, pass was too high. Yeah, so that's two possessions, two turnovers by Quincy. Um, as you said, they played nice defense. They're playing uh, man to man. Um, sounds odd saying that when we have all girls out there, but um, they're playing on the ball and nice dribble penetration, but again, another nice defensive play. Looks and like we got a foul here. They're gonna call a foul on Hopkinton, Bethel Flanagan. Looks like Hopkinton's gonna come with full court man pressure. Um, in this instance, the player can't move with the ball. She's got a pass from right underneath and she did successfully. So here comes Quincy High advancing the ball. All right, man gets the ball back. They get across half court. Man driving right into the hole and can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Davies. Yeah, great take to the hole by Paige Man. Didn't drop, but still a good shot. Flanagan goes to the hole and Alyssa hops there for defense for the Presidents. Oh, nice look oh, down low. Pretty pass. Eve Gendron finishes it off. Great pass by Rory Kennedy there, very alert, and Quincy breaks the ice. Davies again with the ball outside the three-point arc. It's off to Restigini. Restigini driving in, and it's blocked there by Hopps, so and it goes out of bounds to remain Hiller's ball. So Hopkinton's running a little bit of a motion offense here against the man-to-man -man defense. And what they're doing is it's a one-two-two spread. They're keeping the lane open for dribble penetration. Hops so far has been hanging out down low and been effective in the lane. It's a three-pointer for Hopkinton. Yeah, it was Davies with the three, so it's three-two now, Hopkinton on top. Diaz quickly brings it up for the presence. They get it down low to Hops, and a foul's gonna be called Looks like on Kate Finnegan. Second team foul for the Hillers. Gender with the ball. Back up top, Paige Mann, high off the glass, can't get it to go. Fight for the rebound into the hands of the Hillers. Restagini, long shot, no good, and it's going to be President's ball. Diaz was down there trying to get the rebound for the President's, but it goes off a Hopkinton player. Oh, nice job. Well, another turnover. Say, so Rory Kennedy was down at the baseline for the presence. Hillers come right back up top. Nice pass, and Alyssa Hops comes from behind to block that ball. Great job by Bear Hops to get back into play. Yeah, that's what I was alluding to earlier. Hops is hanging around the lane and trying to help out, and she's been very, very effective defensively. Davies with a shot and no good. Coming down with a rebound for the Presidents was Mann. From the Hiller perspective, there's no hesitation offensively, which you like to see. Uh, they're still trying to get their feet wet inside this gym, but thus far, Hopkinson's turned over shots and they're playing very solid defense. 
Another to know with their presence. Davies goes in, and nice layup there by Elena Davies. And timeout call by the Presidents with 5.06 to go. 5-2 to two, Hopkinton. And Sarah Collin calls a timeout to try to settle her team down. Yeah, I think this is a good timeout. You know, you want to preserve second half timeouts, first half timeouts. There's no need to preserve necessarily. Um, we're watching Sarah talk with the players and just try to calm them down a little bit and have them understand, you know, we're not keeping track of turnovers, John, which is probably a good thing because that's not a stat that uh, the Quincy Eye girls would want to hear right now. But I think they have five turnovers. Uh, a couple of them are just mistakes. Um, a couple of them, though, were on attempts at nice plays. They had cutters open and just couldn't execute. So they were looking at what they should be doing properly. They just weren't executing. So Conlon with a good timeout here. We'll see if she can help settle the girls down. And um, Hopkinton right now, they got to feel pretty good. They've, uh, they've come out. They've got a 5-2 lead. Um, Davies who's uh, one of the captains and a senior, is really, uh, she's playing very solidly here coming out of the gate. All right, again, Hill has come with some full court pressure. Quincy does a nice job of breaking it. Hubs trying to go baseline, gets cut off there by Park. Diaz trying to drive in, ball gets taken away there by Davies. Eliza Hops giving chase, and you're going to say a travel call as Davies saw her hops coming out of the corner of her eye. Now see, uh, if she knew what this backboard was like, she might have taken a little, little jumper, jumper layup, but... We'll see if the Hillers stay with this pressure, John. Um, They've just picked up another team foul. That's their third. They only have nine players, and the full court pressure is just not going to bother the presidents. We've seen that. Um, they handled it flawlessly against North Quincy, um, and they're handling it fine here. The, the full court pressure isn't really doing much. Um, so we'll see at a certain point whether the Hillers take that off. All right, fouls called on Kate Finnegan. She comes out of the game with two fouls. Diaz with the ball, gets it over to Hops. Hops shoots the three. Off the glass and in for Alyssa Hops. Hops was getting a little frustrated that she hasn't seen the ball. So her first touch, she let it go and she sticks the three off glass. Nice cutter. Look down low for Caroline Kane, who's just checked in for the Hillers. And fight for the ball and jump ball, Hillers possession. Nice aggression by Frankie Diaz, the freshman. She stuck her nose right in there. What I saw that was impressive, John, is four green shirts in the lane and the offensive rebounding. So Quincy's got to, you know, recognize that, identify it, and they have to react to it. Here's that motion offense I talked about. Davies open for three, no good, and coming down with the rebound was Gendron for the Presidents. Yeah, Gendron's very solid on the boards, and uh, I think that's her third or fourth rebound. And another turnover there for the Presidents. Caroline Kane trying to drive in, can't get the rebound, or excuse me, the basket to go in. Megan Grady, who's also checked in for Hopkinton. Nice aggression by Gendron. And foul's going to be called. Rory Kennedy was getting pestered down there by Megan Grady, and Grady bumped her just a little bit too much there. Ball goes out of bounds, but, you know, on the foul. So that's the fourth team foul against Hopkinton. One more, and Presidents will be going to the line here in the quarter. Looking for Gendron down on the paint, and nice job there by Neve Gendron. Yeah, that's another thing Quincy does very, very well is those quick little inbounds.
from under the hoop and they turn over shot quickly. They did there and Gendron finished. Nice penetration and finish there. Ollie Paharic gets a nice basket there as you said. Tied back at seven now. Kennedy for three off the front of the rim. Gendron, a nice rebound. Gets it back up top now to Paige Mann. Nice defense there by number 15, Holly Paharic on Alyssa Hops. Hoffman comes right back down, and Paige Mann takes it away. Nice steal there by Paige Mann. Took it right out of the hands of Caroline Kane. Yeah. I mean, it, it appears that they're calling it awfully tight on Hopkinson. Um, their fans are very restrained over on the far side of the gym here, but um, that was absolutely a push foul there. Um, I've seen two reaches and a push foul. And then another foul, the ball was on the ground, a player had the ball and the girl just dove on it. There's a misconception, John, when there's a loose ball on the floor that you can just dive in at it, but if it's if there's a player in the way, you can't dive on her, and that's how Hockington picked up one of their fouls. So, so far I've seen four legit calls, and I just don't recall on the fifth, but it's a lot of fouls early on. Ooh. All right, Alyssa Hops will get credit with the block there. Ball goes out of bounds off her, so it'll be Hockington ball. Yeah, Hops doing a great job in the lane. Now you'll see here, the player she's covering is gone, to, uh, she's gone to the far sideline and Hobbs is sagging into the lane and sagging off the player she's covering. Taylor Mann has checked in for the Presidents as well, number 20. Loose ball in the paint and Hillers cannot hold on to it and it goes off them, Quincy Ball. Elena Davies is turning over, nice shots. Uh, she's gonna she's gonna get a little break here with Two minutes to go, but um, she just can't hit, and that's the dynamic I was talking about earlier of adjusting to this gym. Tegan Restagini nice checks back, back in. Back door cut. <laughs> nice. And Eve Jenrin puts it in the hole with that nice pass. 11 7, Quincy on top. Yeah, that was a beautiful play. It was not a giving go, but just a very alert little play. Megan Grady kicks it back up. Sophia Whiteman Krause is in the game now as well for Hopkinton. Restagini with the ball. 10 on the shot clock for the Hillers. Kane trying to drive in and nowhere to go. Loose ball. And a nice hustle there by Megan Grady. Saw the loose ball. Quincy wasn't going for it. She got it and goes to the line to shoot two after the foul. Yeah, I got to tell you, the first time Hops was straight up. She played excellent defense. I'm not quite sure about that call, but, uh, oh, it was not on Hops. I believe they called it on uh, Rory Kennedy there for the reach. So, missed the first, John? Uh, made it. Made the first, yep. okay. All right, nice job there by Hopkinson's Megan Grady, she stuck two. Right, Frankie Diaz trying to run up court, gets double teamed there, and she just does get it away. Paige Mann drives in, and just a little short there into the hands of Hopkinson. Grady with the ball, under a minute to go. Nice pass. And shot there by Caroline Kane, a little short, goes into the hands of Taylor Mann. Yeah, hops again. Nice defense. Oh. Gender releases there, but Gender had a nice shot there, just couldn't get it to go. And foul's gonna be called on the presidents. Leave Gender gets called for the foul. It's a team second. 30 seconds to go now here, and shot clock is off.
Driving in there is Flanagan, and she gets fouled and will go to the line for a three-point play. Page man call for the foul. Ryan Flanagan makes the foul shot. Nice old fashioned three pointer there. All right, Hopkins up by one, 12 11. Hops trying to make something happen, gets double teamed, the ball gets taken away. Six seconds to go, Hopkinton crosses half court. And get a shot off, can't get it to go. Got a second attempt there by Tegan Restigini, but neither will go in. At the end of the first quarter play, Hopkinton comes into the gym and has a one point lead over the Presidents. Coach Greco looking for a call there on the uh, rebounding action, but none made there, so. A um, little bit of a slow moving first quarter. Quincy made a nice adjustment um, offensively. Their point guard was coming down the middle of the court, John, and passing from the middle, throwing to the wings, and they had like three straight turnovers because that's a long pass. They made an adjustment where the point guard started attacking from one elbow to the other, meaning they come down the right side or the left, and uh, that took away the long pass, took away the turnover issue, and Quincy's offense started to move a little more fluidly. Uh, defensively, they played pretty well. Um, Hopkinton has created shots. Uh, they just haven't been making them. Frankly, Quincy's got to make some adjustments and play a little more aggressively on the perimeter defense. They've got to stop these dribble penetrations uh, because if Hopkinson stops hitting its shots, this is going to be a different ball game fast. And we'll look for the president offense to loosen up a little here and hopefully get some points on the board. It's 12-11, uh, as you said, after the first, so we'll see what uh, Quincy can do here in this second quarter. All right, presidents will start with the ball. Get it down, try to get down the Hopkins, it's taken away by Hopkinton. Quickly up now, Flanagan, and she misses the layup, but it goes into the hands of another Hopkinton player. That was Kate Finnegan who got the rebound. You see this nice ball movement by Hopkinton. Davies for three, around the rim and no good. You know, it's tough for a shooter to be missing early on. Uh, when you're a shooter and you're just not hitting, it takes away your confidence. Um, we're going to see what happens here with Elena Davies. As I said, she's a senior. She's, a, she's got a great shot, a nice stroke. Oh, interesting. Foul's going to be called on Frankie Diaz. The officials are calling this one tight, John. Tight on both sides, it seems. Restigini for three, and she drains it. Boy, she drilled that one. Now Diaz brings the ball up. Just does get it to Hops. Hops gets double teamed, trying to get a shot off, does. And Davies comes down with it for the Hillers. Ball gets tipped nice and skate. goes into the hands there of Paige Mann. Quincy needs more of that. They need to be aggressive on their perimeter defense. And uh, Alyssa Hops, a little impatient when she's getting the ball. She's forcing shots because she hasn't seen the ball much. And um, hopefully she can calm that down a little bit. Elena Davies with the rebound, quickly gets back up. Restigini with the ball now. Restigini in the corner, that one's an air ball into the hands of Diaz. Yeah, but what I didn't like that I saw was two players from Hawkington wide open on the perimeter. I think I say the ball was tipped away by Hawkington, so no backcourt. 
And fouls called on Elena Davies. And Mike Greco, the Hopkinton coach, is in disbelief on that one. Thought he had a clean steal. And down the floor for the presidents is, I think it's. Yeah, I think there was uh, a, a Rory knee collision down. there. Um, did you see what happened to that Duke player last week in no. the game uh, against Wake Forest? Wake Forest upset Duke. Kids charged the, uh, it was oh. at Wake Forest. Yes, yes. And some nutbag Wake Forest kid just totally wiped out the Duke uh, seven foot center. He, like uh, walloped his knee and they had to help the kid out of the gym. I hope he's all right. There's gonna be a little bit of a, I believe they're checking her knee, but I'm not certain. Yeah, I, I believe it is her knee as uh, she collided with one of the Hopkinton players and you can see her knee kind of buckle out to her left, so hopefully she is okay. All right, that is Paige Mann. I said it was Roy Kennedy, but it was Paige Mann. All right, so checking in is Taylor Mann. We'll see if the presidents can get their offense going here. This is where they've had trouble getting across half court and getting into an offense. The Hiller's defense has been really tough on them and not allowing them to get the offense rolling. Three there and it is good there by Taylor Mann. Nice ball movement and welcome to the tournament. Taylor Mann, nicely done. All right, big three there. Hiller's one point lead, 15-14. Looking down low for Kane. Kane finds himself in the paint and almost travels, just gets, does get it away. And a three there by Davies, no good in and out. Restagini's shot is no good either. And Gendron finally controls the rebound. Also hops driving into the paint, kicks it out. Gendron for three, and she hits it. Lee Gendron gives the presidents the lead, 17-15. Five minutes to go now here in the second quarter. All right, from the president perspective, this is what you wanted to see. The offense is starting to, to fire up here. And this is still a, it's a uh, hopsless offense. They've not been getting the ball to Alyssa because of some solid Hopkinton defense. Now there's a nice dribble penetration, a great use of the backboard. And that was Kate Finnegan on a tough job there for the basket. And foul's gonna be called on the Hillers on Bethel Flanagan. Ah. Looking for gender. See, in the those corner. are the passes that are getting them in trouble. They have to shorten up the the little passing lanes here. Um, those long passes, the toppers are all over them. One of the things, oh, that, uh, that another long pass. Was... Davies comes down with it, and basket's no good, but she gets fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. Foul will be on Taylor Mann. Yeah, you can throw the ball into the backcourt on an inbound. That ball is still in play, so. Um, what's the issue here? Yeah, he's, he's calling a foul. I, I think what happened, he initially said 1-0, but the yeah, foul was right, on 2-0. Right, right. yeah. yeah. so. But the uh, scoreboard had 1-0 with two fouls. <laughs> <laughs> and there is no 1-0. So, there you go. All right, line change here for the Hillers. As coming in is Megan Grady, Tegan Restigini, and Sophia whiteman Krause. Yeah, Coach Greco doing a nice job of trying to keep fresh legs in there. I talked earlier about the fact you might want to reconsider the full court pressure, but he's not doing so. They're sticking with it, and they're just rotating players nicely. So uh, that's a sign that Hopkinton's uh, 
sticking with their game here. It's just the game, you know, what they've uh, done all season and it's worked, so. And yeah, Alyssa Hopps going to the line to shoot two as she gets fouled in the paint. Holly Paharik gets called for the foul. That's her second. Yeah, those of us who have seen Alyssa this season, you know, scoops from above the block have not been the thing that have been uh, where she's made a living. Um, she got away with that there, and now she's stuck her foul shot. She's a ter terrific foul shooter. Four for four thus far from the line, but um, like to see her getting the ball in a better position because she's very, very dynamic, as we all know. Whiteman Krause gets back up top. You know, one thing I'm seeing here that there's an awful lot of is uh, the Hawkington girls do not do a good job of establishing a pivot foot, but for whatever reason, they're not calling it. And I, I think they should be calling it, but, uh, and you don't want to see that become a factor toward the end of the game if they start making the call, because they're letting them get away with it right now, so. Hobbs can't make anything happen, kicks it back out. Gets a little bit down lower on the block. Nice move there by Hobbs, and she finishes it off. Now that's what I'm talking about right there. She got the ball somewhere where she could do what she does best, and Alyssa finished. Of course, here I am critiquing her game, John, and uh, she's got nine of the president's 21 points, so um, I'm probably, uh, being a little overly critical and shouldn't be, but I'm trying to encourage getting her the ball where she likes to have it and normally has it versus areas where she gets impatient. Oh, nice, nice little give and go there, but couldn't finish. Quincy looking for a foul on Taylor Mann, none called. And nice defense there. I think it was Rory Kennedy, ball goes out of bounds off her, but nice deflection to prevent a layup. Yeah, Quincy said nice active hands defensively this second quarter. They've done a great job with active hands in the passing lane, and that's definitely been a factor. Oh, big block there by Alyssa Hobbs. She read that play the entire way. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kate Finnegan cut in front of her. She has been a force defensively here, a major force, frankly. Under three minutes to go now here in the second quarter. 21-18, Quincy on top. Whiteman Krause driving in, and she gets it to go. It's a really nice dribble penetration and finish. Frankie Diaz trying to make something happen, gets over to Hops now. She takes a quick three and she Alyssa drains it. Hops Alyssa Hops for three, four point lead now for the Presidents. And almost taken away there by the Presidents, knocked out of bounds by Taylor Mann. And I have to tell you, John, uh, both teams, they're starting to play with more confidence and we're seeing what each team is capable of. Elena Davies, a big three there for Hopkinton. Gets them right back into it here. Keep them close. Alyssa Hopps saw some space, and ball was going to get blocked there. Nice job by Kate Finnegan on the block. Finnegan for three, no good. Diaz with the rebound. Taylor Mann lost the ball out of bounds. Our right, substitution here for the Presidents. Taylor Mann will come to the bench, and Evie Catrabone will come in now for the first time here tonight. I think Taylor Mann came out more of a fatigue measure. Um, a good substitution with under a minute 30 here. 
Catcherbone gets tested right away. And nice job there by Catcherbone to keep her hands up and make it a tough shot for the Hillers. Catcherbone for three, a little too long on that one. And also Hoff gets it out of bounds. One minute exactly to play here in the second quarter. You know, John, another thing I'll share with our viewers, if you look at the backboards here, the Quincy High School gym, they have a blue box behind the rim. And that's another issue for visiting teams and uh, for, for players. Whenever I had teams come into this gym, we'd always practice focusing on that blue box. I'd have them shoot layups standing right under the hoop looking at the blue box to get used to it. Because in most gyms, that's a white box. And uh, Hopkinton has had big problems with layups. And uh, I think it's in part the blue box, I really do. Because they've got that blue post behind it and there's just no clear target. Finnegan driving to the baseline, can't go, excuse me, Flanagan driving to the baseline, no good. Hops comes down with it. She has to slow things down. 15 seconds to go here. Quincy can hold for the final shot. Coach great. Sarah Collin calls that out. Yeah, great shot by, I uh, rather great job by Alyssa Hops. Diaz long three, and she hits it. Oh. Big shot there by Frankie Diaz. And there's the halftime buzzer. So nice job there by the Presidents. Got the rebound, came down court, was able to pass it around, find an open Frankie Diaz who hits a big three. And that's gonna give Quincy a 27-23 lead heading into the halftime, Jim. Yeah, Diaz playing like anything but a freshman again. We saw that at North Quincy. John, this is a very competitive game. Um, I don't think either team has got any flow yet. It's in part because of very strong defense. Hopkins has played excellent defense, and they effectively shut down Alyssa Hops for a period of time, denying her the ball. Um, Quincy made some adjustments, figured some things out, and they got a little bit more of a flow here. They scored 16 points in that second quarter. So that was good production for them. Uh, defensively, Quincy's playing really strong, but I'm wary of Hopkinton, which has turned over some really good shots, uh, getting comfortable in the second half in this gym. They rode a few three-pointers, frankly. We don't keep shot stats, unfortunately, as a cable access cable crew. Uh, but I guess that Hopkinton's in the 20% shooting-wise. You know, they just had, they've shot very poorly, but they've turned over good shots, and they're in this ball game. All right, so again, here at the half at Quincy High School, the Presidents 27 and the Hillers 23. Jim and I will take a quick timeout and back to second half coverage in just one moment. Welcome back everyone to Monroe McLean Gymnasium here at Quincy High School. We're at the half. The Presidents lead the Hillers by a score of 27 to 23. Real quick, run down the stats. First for the Presidents, leading the way was Alyssa Hopps with 12 points. Neve Gendron had nine, Frankie Diaz with three, and Taylor Mann with three as well. Jim with Hopkinton. Well, I'm gonna skip a point breakdown because we're running out of time and just say generally, uh, Hopkinton had a nice first half here. Missed a lot of shots, and I'm a little wary to see what happens in the second half because they're definitely owed some points uh, statistically. So um, the girl inbounding the ball here, Elena Davies, had a great first half. Um, Hopkins had a nice balance, 12 points in the first quarter, 11 in the second, and uh, they got points from six different players. So. There's a lot of good things from the Hockington perspective. It's only a four-point game, and they shot poorly. They're playing very solid defense. So let's see what happens here in this second half. Quincy with a forced to turn over here, and now uh, looking to get that offense back flowing as it did in the second quarter, John. I get the ball to Hops at the foul line. And off-balance shot there is no good. Davies with the rebound. Again, uh, Hops looking a little impatient there. That was a force, not what you want to see. Holly Paharic wide open on the three-point line. Can't get it to go, though. Rebounded by Taylor Mann. And loose ball 
Quincy does control it though. Ball goes out of bounds off Hopkinton. Well, regrettably, Quincy's starting out with this long pass thing again. Um. And they're trying to get into Alyssa Hops, who was double teamed front and back. It goes off her and out of bounds. Yeah, Hopkinton did a nice job of focusing on Hops on the first quarter. And now coming out of the half, they're doing the same thing. Um, Alyssa opened up a little bit there with seven points in the second quarter. Uh, but Hopkinton looking to shut her down here coming out of the locker room, second half. Paharik with the ball now for Hopkinton. Nine on the shot clock. Drive in there, is blocked there by Hobbs, who's Tegan Restigini with the shot, who goes out of bounds, remain Hopkins ball, four in the shot clock. Yeah, four seconds on the shot clock. We'll see if Hopkinton's aware of that. This is gonna have to be a catch and shoot type inbound. They get it in, they try to get a shot off and taken away by there, by Alyssa Hobbs. Two on one situation, Hobbs oh, fakes the pass. Oh, gets very it up and pretty. In. Nice job by Alyssa Hobbs. She made the great ball fake in the lefty layup. Flanagan drives in, kicks it back out. Gendron with a the defense there, and that is, that's a nice job, forces the turnover. Well, it appears Coach Greco's halftime talk May have uh, had a lot of focus on taking the ball to the rim. No foul call there as Baharik went in, the defense by Hops. Nice pass there, and Frankie Diaz finishes it off on the pass from Taylor Mann. Yeah, good timeout. I was just about to say, John, Hopkinton, we're at 520. They haven't scored yet, and they're just very tentative. There's something up here. Uh, the girls are not playing fluidly. And I was going to say earlier, it looked like the discussion at halftime was, let's take the ball to the hoop a little more, uh, maybe see about getting hops in foul trouble, because she's such a huge factor here. And she's playing aggressively on defense, and when you see that, you tell your players to take the ball to it and, you know, to take it at the aggressive player. Try to get them in foul trouble. But Hops is so disciplined. Uh, for the young kids watching at home or the, the CYO coaches and whatnot, Alyssa Hops is playing perfect hand straight up defense. Um, she stands there, she doesn't break the plane with her hand, she doesn't reach. And she's got no fouls, correct? Uh, let me double check, but I think that's, yeah, no fouls. And yet she's been extremely active defensively. So we'll see what happens here. Um, this young lady, um, Elena Davies, I'm expecting her to be more of a factor here. Let's see what happens if she's, yeah, she's pulled onto the ball a little more and maybe get, get the ball on the perimeter and look to shoot. Kahark with the ball now for Hopkinton. Well, to their credit, they're showing good patience. Here's Davies going to the hoop. Mm -hmm. right, ball goes out, bounce off the presence, so it'll be Hopkinton ball eight on the shot clock. Nice defense by Quincy and nice patience by Hopkinton, John. And miscommunication there between Bethel Flanagan and Holly Paharik, and it goes out of bounds. Yeah, lost in the excitement here. I don't know if we've emphasized this, but Quincy has stretched this to a nice eight-point lead. Uh, they've quietly come out in the third quarter, put a few hoops down, and played some serious defense, and they've got an eight-point lead. Largest lead in the game thus far. Hops with the ball, gets double team. Now a single team drives in, takes advantage of it, and we will go to the line to shoot two. Oh, 
Holly Paharic is called. Yeah, a foul on Holly Paharic gets her third, and that's a big factor here because she has played super defense on Alyssa Hobbs. She's taken on the challenge. It's been man-to-man. -man. Holly Paharic alone covering Hops, and she's really been up to the task. So, All right, Coach Mike Greco gets Paharic out with those three fouls. Megan Grady checks in as well as Caroline Kane. And Hops makes both at the foul line. Ten point lead now for the Presidents. Now Hops remaining perfect from the line, John. Flanagan working at Divas, drives in. And nice take to the hole there by Bethel Flanagan. Yeah, that was a great dribble penetration. Nicely done. Diaz gives it off to Hops. Hops thought about the three, decides not to. Rory Kennedy open for three and can't get it to go after the high rebound. Flanagan takes the three and a little short on that one, but goes into the hands of Caroline Kane. Kane open for three, she takes it and she hits it. Also Kane's first points, Sean, and it's a big three pointer. Uh, they've cut the lead to five here, 33-28. Hops, nice pass to Paige Mann. She puts it up and in. Yeah, there's the Hops factor right there. They double teamed. Lost track of uh, Gendron. Nicely done. Hops passing the ball very well. And Hops with a Let's nice defense it. there. Tips it away into the hands of Neve Gendron. And Quincy comes down with it. Taylor Mann going baseline and gets fouled. And that's going to be on the floor. Taylor Mann is only a sophomore, John, and she plays like a senior, like she's been around. That was a terrific, you know, the, she, they were overplaying the return pass back out to uh, Hops, and she took it to the hoop, drew a foul. Lovely. Oh, great pass. Great pass. The Gendron with the two points there. Yeah, a little bunny layup because of a great inbounds pass. Leads at nine now. Yeah. They got an offensive foul on Hopkinton. A little moving pick action. All right, that's a foul called on Megan Grady. That's her third foul. Thirty-seven twenty-eight. Quincy on top. Oh. Kennedy for three and a little too long. Nice drop there by Hops to tip the rebound right into the hands of Frankie Diaz. What a play by Hops. Thirty-nine twenty-eight. Eleven-point lead now for the Presidents. Yeah, well, credit to Diaz for the clean finish, but that was a great play by Hops. Now, see, I talked earlier about Alyssa Hops with her hands straight up playing perfect defense. That time, uh, it was a needless reach by the Quincy High player out on the perimeter. You've got a player who's out on the three-point line and you're reaching for the ball. There's just no reason for it. And uh, once the official sees the contact with the reach, they're gonna call it, and that's what happened here. Liliana Catrabone checks in for the Presidents, and the shot there by Hopkinton is short and out of bounds. Well, they're going to say it was. They gave a clock reset. They should check that. Um, yeah, the officials are going to come over and correct the clock. They're saying that it was not a change of possession. Yeah, they're going to say Alyssa Hops got a piece of the ball. Right, right. And as you said, so it's Hopkinton ball. 
and uh, they've got they set the clock at 20, the, you know the 35 second clock. That was the issue. Davies for three, no good, and Quincy just boxes out, but they didn't go for the rebound. Right. Caroline Kane gets it, and a foul's going to be called on Hops on the floor. No, I think they got Catron Bone there. No, yeah, they did. This one was on Liliana, not Evie. And Diaz got a hand on it, goes out of bounds, so it'll remain Hopkins in ball. Quick pass in bounds and shot no good. Diaz with the rebound. Man for three, and she hits it. Taylor Mann, a big three pointer for the Presidents. Ball out of bounds, and it'll be Quincy Ball. And yeah, Hawkinson's going to get a timeout here because uh, the wheels have come off the wagon, John, definitely. Um, Hawkinson's only scored two points this quarter, and uh, they now trail by 14. So, um, and in the first half, the shots weren't falling, but they were turning over a lot of good shots. Um, I was expecting that Elena Davies, that just by, you know, the law of averages, she was going to start sticking some shots because she's got great form. Um, she can penetrate or shoot the three. And so I expected to see her showing up on the scoreboard here, but it just hasn't happened. Um, I talked before the game started about the gym and the, uh, the unfriendliness factor of, you know, the large area behind the hoop and everything. And just for whatever reason, Hockeyton has found no rhythm whatsoever on the offensive end. It's in part been because of the effect of defense, but Quincy's essentially doing a lot of the same things they did in the first half. They're guarding the perimeter a little better, but. So let's see what happens here. Quincy's up by 14 with a minute 10 to go in this third quarter. Super game for the Presidents, hasn't it been? Oh, look at that backboard. Steve Jenner with the two points there. Nice pass by Frankie Diaz. Under a minute to go. Yeah, in the first quarter, John, I had said that this was not the lady presence we were familiar with. Well, these last two quarters, they have just been schooling Hopkinton here. They've done a lot of things really well, and this is what we've seen from these girls this year. A rebound there by Diaz. She brings it up quickly. Hops drives in, trying to go a little up and under there. No good. Rebounded by Neve Gendron. Diaz for three, around the rim, no good. And three <laughs> like players. A dominoes game there in the lane. Bodies flying everywhere. I think they called it an Alyssa Hops, did they? Uh, looks like they're going to call it a Liliana Contrabone. Okay. Geez, I felt badly the first time I said her name, and I was going to apologize as an Irish color uh, man on Access TV for butchering a name, but you're a Kaliri. Is it Catrimbong? Yeah. That's right? Oh, okay. Yep. I thought there was some different pronunciation of it. <laughs> right, two seconds to go, and no good, and that's the end of the quarter here. So it's going to be a score of 44 to 28 with the Presidents on top at the end of three quarters. Well, second and third quarters for Quincy High. 16 points in the second, 17 in the third. Great balance, and they've now, they're now got a 16-point lead. They really settled down here, and they started playing Lady President's basketball, John, after kind of a balky first quarter. And from the Hopkinton perspective, they're in a tough, tough situation because they have got absolutely no flow offensively. 
and I don't know what can it can be done to correct it because I just don't know enough about the team. I, I see them moving the ball the way they did earlier, but um, we'll see if Elena Davies doesn't get more opportunities. I can recall in the first quarter, uh, Alyssa Hoffs wasn't seeing the ball much and didn't do much, while well, Elena did not see the ball much in the third quarter. And that could be in part the result of a nice adjustment by Quincy. I didn't necessarily see that exactly, but that could have been a focus point, and I'm sure it may have been, because Davies is definitely a ball player, and um, she was not able to get, get open or get the ball in that third quarter. So, be interesting to see how things finish, John. Real quick, before the quarter begins, I uh, want to say a good job out to some of the Quincy High boosters who are here helping out, and we're here early setting up uh, Dominic Catrabone and Mike Healy. Uh, at all the games here this year for the presidents and helping out uh, down at the concession stand and setting things up. So I uh, saw them earlier on as the game was before, or before the game, excuse me. So just want to say good job to them for supporting the team this year. All right, Quincy moving the ball around. Shot there by Gendron Short, and Davies comes down with the rebound. Yeah, there's been a great job of Quincy High parents this year involved in sports. We saw it at the stadium, and then, you know, we see it here in basketball. And Davis with a shot rebounded by Hops. Yeah, uh, Hops is just playing absolutely super basketball. Both ends of the floor, all the fundamentals. She's just playing really super ball. Diaz thought she had someone over to her right, but no one was there. Kate Finnegan, ball gets taken away there by Gendron. Great job of getting back on D. Nice hands by Gendron in the lane. You know what's interesting, John, and I, this has been true with both teams. Both teams run motion offenses. You don't see many picks. Neither team offensively is setting any picks or, uh, you know, it's all motion and passing and uh, lost art the pick game which is still a big factor in college and professional basketball there's the reach you don't like that out there and an offensive foul called against maybe that's why they're not <laughs> setting picks <laughs> That was uh, a pick that went awry. Holly Pahara picks up her fourth. So I didn't see what happened there on uh, on the screen she was trying to set, but oh, yeah, it was off just, the ball. Yeah. It was some off the ball action. And right, Diaz was trying to go baseline, but lost it out of bounds. All right, well. Two minutes played here in the fourth quarter and no score yet, or no baskets made yet. And E. Gendry gets a block there for the Presidents. Diaz looking up high for Hops. Wow, she gets it and nice puts it up the What a nice pass. That was one of those passes where the coach is saying, no, no. <laughs> nice pass. Davies driving in. Diaz got her hand on the end to hold her up. And that time Davies will get called for the reach in on the floor. That's Diaz's second foul. Yeah, one of the nice things among many that the lady presidents have been doing is uh, they really sag defensively to help out. Uh, they play man to man, and one of the things you were commenting on in the first quarter is that the perimeter defense was a little soft, and it was in part because of their practice of sagging to help out on the paint. Um, Diaz got away with the first grab at the ball. It was actually a clean play, that's why, but uh, then got caught on the second. So the shooting woes continue for Hopkinton. As we come up on the five minute mark, they've yet to score in this quarter. So the second half has just really been a 
disaster for the toppers. And foul's going to be called on Hoff. Hillers. The Hillers. The Hillers, yes. Yeah, yeah. I've, I'm, I'm lost in Somerville. Strong take to the hole there by Holly Peck Howard, but she can't get it to go in. Kennedy open for three, just a little short. Controlled by Bethel Flanagan, and Flanagan will get fouled. Corey Kennedy with a foul. There, short by Hawkington. Taylor Mann with the rebound. Oh, nice no look pass there, but she didn't get away with that one. It's a nice try, though. We're coming up on four minutes halfway through this quarter, John. And uh, there's a hoop for the Hillers. And Kate Finnegan with the two points. 46 30, Quincy on top. Four minutes to go now here in the game. Hobbs gets Whoa. cut off and yeah. offensive foul called on Alyssa Hobbs. And it was a nice job there by Caroline Kane to take the foul. Yeah, that was a good call. Um, Hobbs going strong to the hoop. That's her first foul. That's really, really an accomplishment when you play the game the way she has. She's been in the paint, working hard. There you see her doing the same thing again. Stopping the layup, no foul, playing it cleanly. It's been a real force. Diaz loses his dribble at center court there, but Taylor Mann yeah. comes to help her out. Quincy's got to correct that. Their point guard has to stop playing from the middle of the floor. They've got to play more from the elbow area and stop with the long passes. Hops from the foul line, Boom. she drains it. Wow. 48-30. Well, that was, a, that was a Euro step on top of an Asian step on top of a travel there. That was an interesting move. I say Holly Paharik, sorry. <laughs> she did not fool Alyssa Hops on that at all. Yeah, and Hops yeah. just blocked it easily. Alyssa took dance lessons and remembered that from her. One of her dance classes. Nice backdoor cut again. Off the ball, backdoor cut, and they hit the cutter for the finish there. All right, 20 point lead now for the Presidents. Rory Kennedy is one of the fab freshmen, John, and she's another one who just plays really above her, her, her grade. She's a ninth grader, but so smart. Quincy on their way to hopefully winning this game. Looks like things are in hand. They're looking to face Lexington in the next round of the playoffs. Yeah, Lexington, the higher seed, will be the host. It is a nice steal. And she's going to go coast to coast for the finish. Nicely done. Kate Finnegan with the two points. Nice play by Finnegan. And fight for the ball, and it'll be a jump ball. Hopkinton only has four seniors, but they only have nine players, so that's a big chunk of their team. Uh, Caroline Kane, Kate Finnegan, and we just talked about Beth Flanagan and Elena Davies. Um, all good, solid players, and uh, I think this will be their swan song tonight. And, um, Tough way to go out, but they did accord themselves well for the bulk of this game. Um, they played pretty well, and you like to see what they're doing down the end as this, as they play out the string here. They're playing really hard. Manny aggressive. Rory Kennedy for three for the Presidents. 
Yeah, the Hillers uh, missed the playoffs last year, Jim, and they're able to uh, get in 10 and 10 this year, and also uh, number 24 in the power rankings. And that's where they're seeded to get into the playoffs as well. Well, you can see why. I mean, as I mentioned in the first half, they did not catch a break. And if we brought them down to Wollaston Beach, I think they would have had trouble throwing the ball into the water. It was just tough. Nothing was going for them. And it's hard to play the game that way. Uh, but they stayed in it. They kept working hard the whole time. And um, I credit them for that fact. Because the first half, um, you know, the, they, they did what they did of staying in this, in, in that, by that I mean staying in the game, by playing hard and playing aggressive defense. They never quit. So it looks like uh, the coaches are going to get some players in and get their first line players out. Um, so that's it for Quincy High girls until the Lexington game, which we've heard maybe Monday, John. And for the Hillers, it's going to be a bit of a bus ride home and a disappointing one. But um, as I said, they accorded themselves well by playing hard. And one thing I like that I see, uh, the four seniors are sitting on the bench together next to their coach. And they're all clapping for the girls on the floor and still in the game, encouraging them. You love to see that. They're not hanging their heads. And uh, with that layup, you see the seniors getting up off the bench to cheer. So it's going to be a really terrific win for the Lady Presidents, John. And um, we'll look forward to the next round of the MIAA tournament. All right, so final score here at Quincy High School. The Presidents 55 and the Hillers 36. Uh, so as you said, Jim, Quincy with the win will go on to face Lexington. In the next round, the round of 16 in the Division I MIA Girls Basketball Tournament, Lexington defeated Acton Boxborough the other night by a score of 74 to 55 to earn their trip into the uh, round of 16. Um, so hopefully. Well, you work hard all season. I'll say this it was good for uh, Quincy to be playing in their home gym tonight. Uh, this was a tough Hopkinton team. And. <coughs> Excuse me, early on, the uh, lady presidents were a little balky. They were having trouble getting rolling. And it was just, it was really a help, the fact that they played this game in their own gym. No bus rides, uh, familiarity, and uh, the girls were able to uh, take their time and get comfortable. Nice turnout from the student body. I didn't mention that earlier. Um, and they're, they're emptying out from behind the team bench. So it was a great turnout of students tonight, John, which is a real, real plus. So um, a lot of good things went on tonight for the Lady Presidents. All right, real quick, we'll run down the recap of the score. First for the Presidents, leading the way with 22 points was Alyssa Hops. Neve Gendron had 13. Frankie Diaz had 7. Taylor Mann had 6. Rory Kennedy with 5. And Paige Mann with 2 for the Presidents. For the Hillers leading the way with nine points, it was Elena Davies. Kate Finnegan had eight points. Bethel Flanagan had five. Megan Grady with four. Deacon Restigini had three. Caroline Kane also with three. Holly Paharic had two. And Sophia Whiteman Krause had two points as well for the Hillers. So again, final score here of 55 36. Real quick, we want to thank all the crew that came out here today to uh, help make this game possible. On camera, we had Scott Daniels and Frank Hart. On graphics, we had Anna El Torre. On audio and our engineer was Chris Potter and our director, Peter Doherty. So we want to thank all the uh, sports crew for coming out and doing a great job here at the uh, high school to uh, bring coverage for us here tonight. Yeah, thank you to all of you. They, you do an excellent job. I hope the folks who are watching from Hopkinton were impressed with our work tonight here. Um, uh, you know, we, have, uh, we do our best here. We're all amateurs and... The folks who work the camera and then work in the truck, they do an excellent job. So uh, really terrific stuff. Uh, nice win and a nice sign-off for us here uh, for the season. I, I don't know that we'll be doing any more games unless we're going into the garden or something, John, which would be nice. like to see uh, the lady presidents keep, keep on rolling. Uh, we won't be in Lexington 
whenever uh, you know, whenever and whatever that's played. But uh, maybe you know, give the girls some incentive if they want to be on TV again. <laughs> Get yourselves to the garden. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens there. with uh, on the other side of the bracket. You know, Bishop Fiend is the number one seed uh, in, in the tournament, and if Quincy moves on, there's a good chance they might be facing uh, the Bishop Fiend. But you never know. They could have an upset, and uh, if there was an upset, Quincy might be hosting another home game in uh, the round of, of eight. But we'll see what happens here, and if it does, yeah, we'll, be, be nice. we'll be back here certainly at Quincy High School for that. So... Uh, but if that is the case, we had a uh, fun season of high school basketball, and hopefully we will get another game, but we'll see how things go. And maybe, like you said, Jim, we'll be at the Garden for, uh, for a nice game for the Presidents as well. Yeah, well, there are a lot of smiling faces below us, and we're very happy for them. So I want to congratulate the team, congratulate the uh, Presidents coaching staff led by Coach Conlon. They made adjustments over the course of the game, and... Um, they really did a terrific job of taking a game that looked like it was going to be very evenly played, particularly after the first quarter, and just grinding away and putting this putting this uh, Hillard team away in that third quarter. So congrats to the Lady Presidents, and uh, a great season continues on. All right, well, again, final score here at Quincy High School. The Quincy Presidents 55 in the Hopkinton Hillers 36. For Jim Timmons, my name is Jonathan Clary. Thanks for watching this edition of QA TV Sports. We'll see you next time.